So now we come to the planning and preparation stage. What we'll go through is some basic um, home networks as well as um, some system requirements that you will need to in order to um, effectively run a Bitcoin node. Now, this is a diagram of a typical home network. Um, your internet service provider will provide you with a router and the router's job is to assign IP addresses um, and facilitate traffic between um, all of these devices. So the router um, will be assigned a, um, an IP address and this is typical, uh, but it's not always, but it's 192.168.1.1. And all the other devices will then get assigned a unique um, IP address. In this particular diagram that I've got is uh, 192.168.1.2 for the PC, uh, 3 for the printer, 4 for my mobile phone, and 5 for the laptop, and finally 6, which is the uh, note box that we are going to build. Now, what will happen is communications will be able to um, connect through uh, the router into the node box uh, from our PC. And so that's what we're going to be doing. So this will be your existing PC that you um, already have, or it can also be your laptop that you already have. And it doesn't matter which operating system you're on. Um, it can be Windows, Mac or Linux, whichever one you're most familiar with. But you will need to what's known as um, SSH in to the node box that you are about to build. So this will be um, facilitated uh, via um, for Windows, you can do this with a program called PuTTY. Uh, for Mac and Linux, um, already installed into your operating system is a program called Terminal. And I'll teach you more about how you can utilize that um, and, and basically remote control this node box. So now let's go through some of the hardware requirements of the node box. So what I'm using is a Dell Optiplex 9020. Um, it some, looks something like this. Um, and basically you can see it's a very small box um, and it comes with an i5 processor, eight gigabytes of RAM, and it's got a one terabyte SSD in there as well. So you can see um, the blue cable here is uh, basically the, um, the ethernet cable and that the other end of that is going into my router and then we've got a power supply. And this is all you will need um, throughout the series. However, when you are installing Ubuntu uh, live server for the first time, you will need to hook up the monitor and a keyboard um, as well as create a boot disk on a uh, USB stick to install Ubuntu onto the machine. And I'll show you how to do that um, later in the series. But basically, this is your hardware requirements. It's just a simple PC with a one terabyte SSD. Um, and I would recommend a two terabyte if you're going to uh, use this node box for, you know, um, uh, f f for years. Um, so say, for example, you want to use this for five years, then, you know, um, this is, I would probably go with the two terabyte at this point. However, they do come uh, a little bit dearer and they, um, yeah, depending on your budget, that will be um, your decision. So I recommend um, a Evo, um, a Samsung uh, 870 Evo. Um, these are pretty good um, SSDs that are available on the market. Um, I would strongly consider uh, that as my option there. They're reliable, they're fast, um, and you know they'll hopefully last the test of time. Now, as for the actual Dell Optiplex, um, you can get them off secondhand marketplaces like Facebook Marketplace um, or Gumtree or even um, on Ozbargain as well. These machines are available secondhand. They're in abundance. Um, they're usually X. Uh, X lease business uh, computers. So, you know, they're very, very good and they're quite affordable. Um, one of these, will, uh, I got mine one for 150 Australian dollars, and then the one terabyte, I think, was also 150 um, AUD. So all up, I spent about $300 um, on this build. Now, this is a machine that we will have 24, we will have it on 24 seven. So uh, you won't shut this thing down, it will always be on, which means um, that you will need a 24 seven um, internet connectivity, so your router also needs to be online as well. Um, and you will also need, obviously, uh, electricity. So if those two go down, well, then you're not going to be um, able to use your node box. So just uh, remember that. Now, the next thing in the planning and preparation stage is to uh, uh, create a Ubuntu um, boot disk. So what you'll need to do is um, head on over to ubuntu.com. And you can go to the download section and um, go to the Ubuntu server, get Ubuntu server. 
and we will do the um, manual server installation option two, and we will download um, Ubuntu 22.04 LTS. Um, and so we can get that from here. So once that has finished downloading, you can proceed to um, open up a program or install a program called Balena Etcher onto your um, computer. Um, and you flash from file, select that file. So Ubuntu 22.04 live server, select the, um, the, the, the USB and hit select and flash it. Enter in a password if it requires it. And um, you can start to flash your uh, your USB drive, um, remembering that the entire USB drive will be wiped, so just be careful. This will create your boot disk. So once that has been flashed, you can plug in your keyboard, your monitor, uh, the USB drive that you just flashed, um, and you can plug in your network cable and finally your power supply. So on first boot of your machine, what you want to do is go into the BIOS of your machine and you will be presented with a screen looking something like this. Basically, what you want to do is make sure that the boot sequence is starting off with the USB storage device and make that the top and then um, move on to the, um, the the drive that you'll be installing um, Ubuntu on, which is the Samsung SSD in my case. The other thing that I would also recommend changing in the BIOS is going down to the AC recovery um, section and basically changing it to power on. So what happens here is that system powers on after AC power is restored. So say, for example, the electricity cuts out. When the, once the electricity is back, then your node will start um, up without any intervention. Uh, you won't have to hit that power button. So that is another thing that I would recommend doing in the BIOS. Now, to get into the BIOS, you just hit uh, F1 and F2. Um, now to get into the BIOS, whilst the PC is booting, um, keep pressing the F2 button. Other manufacturers may have F1 or F12, but basically you want to get into a screen like this. When you first boot up the PC again, um, it should hopefully uh, read that you've got the Ubuntu live server. Um, and what you want to do is just go to install server. So let's go into the installation process of that. Okay, so we will select our language, which will be defaulted to English, so that's fine. And keyboard layout, fine. And we will install Ubuntu server. Um, we won't go with minimized, we'll just use Ubuntu server. Um, just hit enter. And this is a really important number here. Um, this is the IP address that will be assigned to your node box, and you should write this down. For me, it is 192.168.55.31. Now, this is how we will um, remote control uh, our, 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 our node box without using a monitor. Um, however, during the installation process, which we're currently in, you will have a monitor and a keyboard. Um, however, when we disconnect it, we will need this IP address um, to ensure that we can remote access into our, 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 our node box. So just really pay close attention um, to this number that is presented to you. Um, we'll go done. Done. Now here, um, because I'm in a virtual machine, um, yours will say something like Samsung with the one terabyte or the two terabyte or whatever disk that you've got. Um, but yeah, you, you want to use the entire disk, but you don't want to set this disk up as an LVM. So you can um, remove that by pressing the space bar uh, and then going all the way down and hitting done. This looks um, good to me, so we will use up the entire um, disk space. Uh, obviously, yours will be one terabyte. This is just a virtual machine that I'm using to show you. Um, so we'll go done there. And are you sure you want to continue? Continue. Now you want to put in your name. I'm going to use Satoshi, so I'm just going to use Satoshi as that. Uh, the server name that I'm going to use is Nodebox. Um, in terms of the username, I'm going to use Satoshi, and I'm going to create a password as well. Okay, so um, it's up to you what username you want, but just for me, I'm going to be using Satoshi and that'll be used all throughout uh, the entire series. Okay, um, do we want to install OpenSSH server? Yes, we definitely do want to install this because this is what's going to allow our PC um, to connect back to this node box. So we will hit the space bar on that and we will um, make sure that that is uh, installed. So done. Um, any of these featured snaps, we don't want any of these. So just hit tab and done. And it will start installing the operating system.
Okay, so that's now done and you should see a reboot now um, screen. So we'll just hit reboot now. And it'll also say, please remove the installation medium and press enter. So you'll just remove that USB stick out of your computer and hit enter. Okay, so you'll be presented with the login screen like this. Um, there'll be some you know, gibberish that gets pre presented to you, but just hit the enter button and you can see the node box login. So you can hit um, go in and just type in Satoshi as your username and the password that you set. Um, and you should be able to log in and you'll be able to see the um, uh, the, the, the disk usage. So 14%, um, you'll see the memory usage and you'll also see your IP address of 192.168.55.31. Now, this is a virtual machine um, that I have just used. So what I'll actually be doing is using the node box um, that I created earlier um, and it will have the IP address of 192.168.55.30. So throughout the series, you will see um, 192.168.55.30 being used throughout the, um, throughout the course of the series. Now to log in, you will need to open up either PuTTY if you're on Windows or if you're on Mac or, Windows, uh, or Linux, you'll need to open up Terminal. So I'm just gonna open up a terminal here. Um, and what we will do is we will SSH into this IP address here. So we go SSH Satoshi at 192.168.55.31. And you'll say, uh, do you want to continue? Yes. And the password for Satoshi that you just um, created earlier, and you are now in. So you are actually remote logging into um, this machine here. Now that you're in a position to SSH in to or remote login to the uh, node box, you can remove the keyboard and the monitor and just leave in the power supply and the network cable um, and you are now good to go. Thanks for watching and if you'd like to support the work that I'm doing, head on over to ministryofnodes.com and click on the support button. I accept Bitcoin, Lightning, PayPal and credit card. If you want one-on-one -on -one consulting, head on over to the consulting page and book in into my calendar widget. I can help you with holding your own keys, running your own node and privacy best practices. Once again, thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next video.